Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Restorations. Today, I wanted to take some time to make a video on stuff like this. There's a lot of confusion out there, especially if you're a new tech or a tech that's up and coming, on what type of scan tool you really need to get. Now, there are a lot of options. I break them down into categories. There's your code readers, there are your scan tools, and there are your professional diagnostic programs. Now the fourth one that I come up with is what I call a mid-level scanner. And I've got some examples over here I'm gonna go over with you of all of these types. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get the camera closer in. I'm gonna start off with the, the cheapest and easiest entry into OBD2 diagnostics, and that is a code reader. Although the meaning of code readers has changed some over the last 10 years, especially the last five years. So we'll go into some of the differences you're gonna see there. And then we'll move up, I'll talk about prices and everything else. Why am I making this video? Because when I was a young guy and I bought my first scan tool, I really didn't know what I should get. Listening to the guys on the Snap-on truck, that was a terrible piece of advice. And then it cost me a bunch of money, wasted me a bunch of money. And so I'll try to help you in the course of this video not make the wrong choices when you're getting started in this career. Let's do it. All right, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of different tools on the table. And I also have, uh, in this case, TIS, TechStream, Toyota information system, that's Toyota, Lexus, and Scion. And I also have, and it's minimized right now, but uh, Volvo Vita installed on this computer. So we do have, oh, just a little bit of variety here when it comes to repairs. And I'll get into why you might need those later. But let's start off with these two right here. So all these, including the computer above, will read codes. All of them will. Most of them will read codes from just about every system in the car, but not all of them. When we start off with something like this, we're looking at what's really the last, the, the earliest style here. This is our, this is an Ansel 8530. This thing here is a code reader. Now it does have some updates. Pretty much all of the code readers you're going to find at this point in time are going to have the ability to look at live data as well. So when you get into this, you're going to buy a tool like this. This probably costs $60, give or take, these days. You can find these even lesser models for maybe $20 or $30 that just read and erase codes in the engine. This one here will read and erase codes in the engine and in the transmission. And it does have a little bit, a very limited amount of information if you want to get into live data. So you're going to have what's called PIDs. That's your live data streams. And this will give you some but not all of that data. It also has readiness, and that's important if you're uh, doing emissions control stuff. So if I have replaced a part and I wanna make sure the car is ready to be inspected, I'm going to use a, pro, a tool like this, and I'm gonna to check to make sure that all my readiness are set so that the car can be you know, re-registered in my state. Now these are all gonna be OBD2. They did make one, here's a video or a clip of one, a video I made years ago. I had an Innova that was very similar in function as this Ansel, but it did have OBD1 connectors, so like GM 12 pins and the half moon shape for Toyota and all the different models that were made from 95 back to say 1980. Very limited functionality on those, but if you're playing with classic cars at this point, and it's hard for me to say that anything pre-95 is considered a classic, but I guess it is, that that is uh, an option you still have out there for some of these tools. What can this not do? Lots. There is no programming that can be done with this tool. It also won't get into your subsystems like climate control units, um, cruise control, things like that, seat controls, door controls, things like that. You're not gonna be able to do any kind of bi-directional controls with something like this, but you're only spending you know, $60 or less for a tool like this, and so you have the options uh, to move up. This is a pretty inexpensive thing, and most of the people that have tools like these here above us, or even uh, you know, if they're working at a dealership and have OEM software, they are also still going to have uh, something like this because it's an easy way to run out to a customer car, pull a code, and be like, hey, you know, here's what I think it is. Let's do some diagnostics on it. But you can show it to a customer. You don't have to go through the process of going through this, finding the vehicle, and all the rest. This is just a, an easy fix here. All right, to move up from that, you get into something like this. This is a strange name, new car or moo car. I can't remember how it is. But um, this is kind of a, they call this a three, sometimes it's called a two system, a three system, a four system. And there's a variety of these made. But this one here, and I'll show some pictures. I've, I've reviewed quite a few at this level. 
This would be what I call a mid-level scanner. It does offer access to nearly all of the systems. Uh, the most famous one that I had for quite a few years and made several videos on over the years is the uh, Foxwell NT624, I think it was. And here's a, a little clip of that. And so that would talk to every system on a car, mostly. I mean, there's always some exceptions when we're looking at tools, but it would not do bi-directional stuff. And so you can see on this, hopefully, make sure the camera can get it, yeah. You can see on this, we do have the ability to do diagnostics, freeze frame information, we can erase codes, we do have our data stream, but we have some other stuff here. And, uh, and so, I don't know, I don't know because I don't have this plugged into a car just how far this will go, but we do have, like we are looking at vehicles. So if I want to get into Volvo, and so I don't, I don't have a cable hooked up, but it will go in and talk to you. Well, I can go into demo. And let's see what we got here. We're just going to go to demo. I'll give you an idea here. So this is going to do stuff. Is this going to be fast? No. It's not going to be quick. Is it going to be uh, able to cover everything? Absolutely not. But we do have what's called a system scan. So it's going to look at all of the equipped computers in the car. SRS, depth deterrent, steering angle, tire pressure, you name it. And it's going to give us codes for all those. So in a lot of ways, it mimics a pro-level tool, but it is not a pro-level tool. It's mid. So if you are going to, you know, let's say you're a tech and you're like, man, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm three years in. They're starting to give me jobs other than brakes and tires and oil changes and they're wanting me to do a little bit of light diagnostics. If you are serious about the career, is it worth getting a tool like this instead of just a regular code reader? Yeah, definitely, because I can dig a little deeper. Anything I don't have to turn over to another tech is, is a good thing for me. So this would be a tool, then like I said, there are probably a dozen, if not more, tools along this way. I know that Launch makes them, Autel makes them, Xtool makes them, that are, that are mid-level tools that'll get you into most systems that'll at least allow you to read and reset and get some live data or some freeze frame from it. What they won't do for you though, is they will not give you the ability to do bi-directional controls. So that's what you have with that. That's your, your mid-level scan tool. These range anywhere from about $100 up to about $350. The ones at the higher end, the $350 ones, they're gonna be much more like these tools here they're going to offer a lot. They might have oil light resets. So they do offer some like really limited bi-directional controls. So they'll have some resets. Um, parking brake, you know, if we're doing electric brakes, we need to reset our parking brakes, that kind of stuff. So it will have those sorts of, of functions built into them. But again, not true bi-directional control, just limited bi-directional control on the higher end units. Okay, and then we move into this, which is our professional grade, our pro grade, our A-tech level scan tools. Now, back when I started and bought my first pro-level tool, it was the OTC Genesis, which later became the Genesis Evo. I made some videos on that. You can see some clips here. And that worked well through 2015. They stopped supporting it. But that, that tool was around from 2000 to 2015. It did offer some bi-directional controls for its time. It was pretty revolutionary. And it worked well. It was also sold as the Mac uh, well, let's see, no, it was the Matco Maximizer, and Cornwell sold a version of it too. And you'll find that a lot of tools from Mac and Cornwell and, and Matco are rebranded tools. Launch, I believe, has Matco all over it now. I think for a while they were using the OTC Genesis Touch, but I don't think they sell that anymore. And then those tools kind of went away. What I don't have in front of me, I just don't have it out of the box right now, is an Autel tool. Autel kind of revolutionized manufacturers from China getting into the scan tool game. And so right around the time that the, the uh, Autel, or I'm sorry, that the uh, OTC Genesis started to get aged out, uh, Autel came out with the MS, what was it, 803 or something like that. I'll show a picture of it here, which is long since obsolete as well. But it really changed the way people look at tools. Because up until that point, if you wanted a pro-level tool, you were either getting it from a major manufacturer or you were getting it from Snap-on or Mac or Maco. And you'll notice that I don't have any name brand tools because they have pretty much no longer necessary. I have an OTC uh, Genesis Evo. No, let's see, what do I have? OTC Evolve, which is similar to these, Android based. And it's got some years on it now. There's nothing that these tools do that that tool can't do. 
And there is a lot of things that these tools can do that that tool can't do, if that makes sense. So then we move into Snap-on. I have a Snap-on Zeus. That is the biggest ripoff I think I've ever experienced in my entire life. We also have an Apollo at work, also a giant ripoff. And what you're finding is manufacturers like Launch, like Xtool, like Autel, they're offering the same kind of coverage, the same kind of features and functions for a whole lot less money. And the software to update these is a whole lot less than any of the big manufacturers. So if you're gonna go into the pro level game, you're probably going to want to look at one of those models. You're looking at launch. Now, this being the absolute premium that they sell right now, the, the Pro 3 S Plus, that's what I bought. I'm an ATEC. With this tool, you can do just about anything. You have full vehicle coverage. You have full bi-directional controls. You have some special features that you can turn on and off of vehicles. You can do some programming with this. You can get into TPMS and, and battery testing with optional modules. You can put a scope on some of these. So there's a lot of stuff. I go into other modules on this one. And you have uh, some, I mean, you can just take a look through here. I don't want to get too deep in any one of these tools. But we have battery tester, mobilizer programming, current clamp testing, a bore scope, a key programmer, and electrical insulator. So there's a lot of stuff that's available on these things. The X tool here similar we have a lot of we have auto scan functions we have special functions that we can get into with this that are just incredible you can take a look at the bi-directional controls and this is just a partial list because a lot of cars still offer the ability to do updates and upgrades inside of it like i want to turn my seatbelt dinger off i want my doors to lock when i put the car in drive those are the kind of bi-directional or programming controls you get with a pro level tool and these are all at or below $1,000, which is pretty amazing considering what the Zeus cost, which I won't even mention here, but it is brutal and what a ripoff it was. And then, you know, we have the Pro Elite over here, which is pretty much, I mean, it's missing a few features and functions that his big brother has, but we are also looking at, you know, a slightly smaller screen and a better price tag on that. When I got this one, uh, it was on sale, and, and these have a two, that has a three-year free update. So you're buying a tool, you're getting three years of service with that before you have to even pay for an update on it. So that's pretty awesome. So these tools will do a lot of that pro-level stuff. So you want to know why they have programs like this up here, and I'm going to zoom in on it while I talk, just so you guys get a better view of that screen. And I'll show you some clips from the videos that I've made on Vita over the years as well. But this is a OEM level program. And that means it's gonna have your wiring diagrams, it's gonna have repair information, all that's gonna be built in. You're also still gonna be able to scan and talk to every single uh, module on there. And you can kind of see the picture there that it shows all the different computers on that. But this also offers the ability to program. Now you need something called a J tool to hook to it. And that will allow you the ability to program through Toyota's uh, or you know Scion or Lexus. And of course, Vita has the DICE module, although I think they've upgraded to something newer at this point. And those allow for programming as well. But you have to have OEM software like this in order to do deep level programming. If I'm replacing the main computer on a car, none of the smaller tools that I've shown here today are gonna be able to program that. Uh, well, I won't say none, but most will not allow you to do that kind of deep level programming. Those are software packages that you usually need to purchase from the manufacturer and then do your updates through that. So that is where this is at. If you are interested in getting into a deeper level of understanding of the automotive industry, you're going to need to get yourself a tool to read cars and to understand what's involved in fixing those cars. This is the way that a new tech should get started. Something like this little Ansel 530, an Innova whatever, Foxwell, there's so many companies that make these. I'll put some pictures of various really low-end tools like this. And remember, low-end doesn't mean no good. Low-end just means that it's, it's, it's not going to offer you all that those offer. And then you get into that mid-level scanner like the Foxwell 624 and, and you know, uh, the Ansel X7, which I don't have pictured here, but kind of looks like these pro-level tools but still doesn't offer the bi-directional controls that a, a full-fledged pro tool would have. But this one here, you know, gets in and does well. There's a lot. Uh, Launch sells some, Autel sells some, Ansel sells some, Foxwell sells some. There's just a bunch of them out there. And it's a good little tool. I mean, what it does 
for most techs who have only been in the business for three or four years that are starting to get those jobs that are like, oh, wow, I have to read what? I have to reset what? I have to undo what? Or recalibrate something? This is going to be the kind of tool you can start with. Now, they do make ones, like I said, like the Ansel X7 that have larger screens. These are not going to be as fast as any of the pro-level tools, but they do give you a lot more functionality than something like this. And then for those guys and gals who have been doing this for years, this is pretty much what we're what we're up against, right? The the ability to do the ability to do all the stuff that these offer is um, is pretty incredible. And so, like you're seeing here, how many things we have, and here's another one, you know, pulling it up. All the different resets, start, stop, reset, transport mode, windows, calibrations, DPF, regen, right? And no matter what the make of the scan tool, a lot of these are very similar. I'm a huge fan of launch products, but I've used a lot of other ones like Autel and Xtool and, and several others. And I've been happy with every single one that I've played with except for one of the newest Autels. And there's a video that I've got coming out later on this summer or into the early fall that... Uh, I haven't been that disappointed in a tool since I bought the Zeus, uh, and that's a surprise because it was a very pricey piece of equipment. But these uh, these also allow you to run a shop, and uh, I don't know if I've shown you, all. Oh, you can watch my other videos on this, but we have user info, we have the ability to send emails to customers, and, and some of these tools even give you kind of like uh, shop management stuff, what tech is working on what, that kind of stuff. Now, none of them that I've worked on uh, that are this level have had any kind of uh, uh, price. You know, like they don't tell you the amount of hours that that requires separate software. And then lastly, I'll just take one last quick look at this. Uh, matter of fact, I'll pull up Vita. And, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you guys some of the other programs that are out there. There's Vita. I've got a car pulled up here. It's actually looking at a much older car for a customer. I'm surprised it's still on the road, but it actually is in pretty good shape. And so that exists as well. You have the ability to get into those OEM tools and do programming and do all the rest. And I'll make a video on that as well someday down the road. But there you go. I hope that this helps. I made a video. and It's just so out of date. I made it back on the original channel years ago that talked about the same kind of things. As you're getting into this industry, you need to know what you're getting yourself into. And I hate it if you go out and buy yourself, you know, a tool like this or, or like any of these, when maybe you're just really kind of can do that for a few years. And you know, the best part about a tool like this is that it really never gets obsolete. This is always gonna work. And so we can get rid of this if we upgrade to an X tool or a launch or an Autel or whatever brand, you know, and, and then you can just throw this in the bottom drawer. It'll still come in handy. I probably use this uh, you know, maybe 10 times a month, you know, where, yeah, sure, I use these every day, but that's certainly not obsolete if I'm still using the heck out of it. Now, the mid-level tools, when you move from something like this up to something like these, well, yeah, that, that tool probably can be resold, but you know what? When you're moving up to a newer level, these can usually be resold to other techs in the shop because somebody else is up and coming as well, and now they've moved into your position. That'll do it for today, my friends. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer those for you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.